Hi and welcome to this first episode of Programmer Interviewing Questions. So when you apply to a job as a programmer, you should expect to be get tested at the interview. Sometimes you get fun mathematical problems and sometimes you get uh, more difficult algorithm problems and it really depends on what kind of job you are, you are seeking. Uh, so in this first screencast uh, with the interview questions for programmers, we're going to address prime factoring. I've often sat along on the interviewer side of the table and interviewed the programmers. So what we are looking for is how you address the problem and how well you handle stress. Because trust me, it's a really stressful situation. But if the interviewers are any good, they'll try to make you feel comfortable and help you along to solve the problem together. So what is prime factorization? Every positive integer number can be expressed as the product of primes. So take 20 for instance. If you multiply 2 times 2 times 5, you get 20. And all positive numbers can be expressed as product, product of prime. So you need to develop an algorithm that will provide you with numbers which of the product, when you multiply them together, will provide the given number that uh, the interview is asked for. Uh, so let's get right to it. So what I've got in front of me is a simple solution where uh, we have the boilerplate example, we get in a number and we have the answer and then we're going to implement the prime factorization and at the end we are printing the result to the console. If we run this, it's nothing fancy. Uh, so the next run, I'm using .NET, you can use uh, any language or ID of choice. Uh, it doesn't really matter, you can even solve this with pen and paper if you want. Uh, as I said, we usually run this up on the whiteboard, so you don't even need to provide a program that compiles. So if you're wondering why the lighting is uneven all of a sudden, it's because one of the lamps just died. But now let's focus on implementing this fa uh, prime factorization. So the first thing that we're going to want to realize is that we need to uh, ha have some kind of uh, while true or do while loop uh, until we reach an end result. So we're going to need to divide our number with the lowest possible prime as many times as possible uh, until the reminder isn't uh, zero anymore. And then we're going to need to find the next prime and divide it. And uh, we're going to need to recalculate the, rem the remaining part until we reach 1. Then we are finished. So to do this, I think it's, it's well suited to use a do while loop. So we want to do something while uh, the remaining part uh, the remaining part of the, div the, of the last division is uh, greater than 1. So if our number in is 20, then we want to have a remaining part. Uh, remaining. Uh, so we're going to start the remaining is the actual number itself. And then we're going to uh, divide uh, this, uh, this number with the lowest possible prime until we reach 1. And our current prime that we're going to start with is going to be the lowest prime, which is 2. So current prime is 2. And now we also don't, we can get rid of this list that has these predefined primes in it. So while, uh, so simply while the remaining, uh, remaining number is uh, greater, greater than one, we want to keep dividing. So as, as I already said, we want to keep dividing with the lowest prime and then find the next prime until we can't divide with the lowest prime anymore. So simply while uh, the remaining part, and then, then we use the, mod modulu, the, the modulus operator, uh, which is key to understand that we need to use. Uh, so while the, re the, the remaining part uh, is uh, zero, then we know that we can divide the number with the prime. So then we add the number to our, uh, to our results array. And now we need to divide the, the, the number with the current prime and keep on looping as many times as possible. So the remaining part, we're gonna divide it with the current prime. 
So if we stop and think about this for a second, uh, we can see that we come in here with the number 20 and 20 modulus 2, uh, it goes 10 times so the reminder will be 0 so we can add 2 to here and then reminding the, rem the, the new remaining will be calculated to uh, 20 uh, divided by 2 which is 10. And then we come up here once again so 10 modulus uh, 2 uh, that's 5, no, <laughs> uh, so 10 divided by 2 is 5 and the remaining part is 0, so we can add 2 once again to the list uh, and then we'll try to calculate a new remaining part, which, which will be 10 divided by 2, which is 5, but this time when we loop, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna come here and see 5 modulus, uh, modulus 2 uh, will be it so that division will be 4 and we get the remaining part uh, that will be 1 so we can't add 2 once again so we got 2 and 2 and now we need to find the next prime so we have our current prime so one simple thing to do here is just to simply say current prime should be uh, next prime instead and then we'll need to define a new function that calculates the next prime so this is a part of the problem. So how do we calculate the next prime? And we can start off uh, by cheating here. So we can keep a static list here with a couple of pre-calculated primes. So that's not necessarily cheating because it's really just an optimization. So let's declare uh, a static list here uh, of integers that is our primes uh, and we can add a couple of primes here so we'll get pretty far with just having the first 10 or 20 primes uh, so let's go 2, 3, 5, 7, uh, 11 right, 13, uh, 17, 19, 21 uh, right let's stop there because it's getting too hard for me to do this in my head. Uh, so we'll get pretty far with these primes. I don't know if I missed one. I don't think so. Uh, right, so it looks good. Uh, so instead of implementing this next prime now, let's just use this uh, list here and return the next prime. And so we're going to look in the primes array and use link here to get the next number that is greater than the prime that we are sending into this func to this method. So we're going to use a lambda function here and we want the next number in the array that is greater than the current prime. Now I'm going to need to import a new using statement for link. So this will work for now and it will work for fairly small numbers. And uh, I think that this probably does the job for now. So let's try to run this and see what happens. So DNX run. And we get the same result. And just to make sure that we aren't cheating here, let's not hard code the number we get in here. Let's actually parse it from the arguments that we pass into our program. So let's parse the first. We're just gonna expect the user to pass in uh, arguments to our program. We're not gonna check if we don't pass anything. That's not necessary for this ex exercise. Uh, so now we can just pass in something different, 40 for instance, and we get two times two times two times five. So that looks good, 41 and now we needed to find a prime that wasn't available in our static list so now we probably need to uh, implement this method here next prime to be able to give us larger primes than 21 so let's do that so the first thing we're, we're going to want to check is we want to get the last prime we have in our array which will be primes and then last and if our current prime is uh, the last in, is the same number as the last one. Then we want to calculate a new prime and add it to our array, right? So by doing this, uh, we actually do, do a, 
do an optimization so we just append to the array sometimes you see candidates that start from two and get the next prime uh, all over again for each time they want to get a new prime but this way we just append to our array and we know that 21 was our last prime so we can start from 21 and just simply add one and check if that's a prime and the key key part here is to also implement uh, a check that checks a number if it is a prime so that's what we're going to do next so if current prime is the last one in the array then we want to get the next uh, then we want to get the next number so let's define our next prime and that will be our our current prime uh, and then our current prime uh, plus one and then we want to check if this is a prime and we want to keep adding one until we hit a prime number so while it isn't a prime while next number here so this isn't really next prime yet so this is just a number until we know that it's a prime for sure uh, we want to keep uh, keep increasing uh, the number next prime until uh, we we are certain that we have a prime and once we've got that we can add primes to our primes list uh, which will be the next prime down here so there are certainly many ways of doing this so this is just a way and as I said we prefer the brute force method before you actually start optimizing because we want to see if you can solve uh, this problem by simply addressing them as partial problems and this is one of the partial problems so now we're gonna need to define is prime so this is our fun part here so how do we check if a number is a prime so the definition of a prime is that it's simply dividable uh, by itself and one uh, so so what we want to do is we want to iterate we want to uh, write a for a for loop that will start from two and try to divide the number uh, with the with the iter with the iteration variable and see if it's uh, if it's evenly dividable with the current loop variable and if it is evenly dividable then it's not a prime but uh, if it isn't and we reach the actual number then uh, we know that we have a prime so to implement this we simply do a for loop and we want to iterate up to uh, our next prime because if we reach the next prime then we know that we have a prime so we can be a little bit smarter here as well we know that we don't actually need to iterate up until the prime so a simple optimization here is just divide next prime with two you don't need to check further than that and i think you can uh, do uh, even a harder uh, generalization here but let's be let's stay on the safe side and say divided by two and it's really simple so if our next prime so if the re remainder when dividing by our loop variable i which shouldn't start with zero of course which should start with two uh, if that's zero then we don't have a prime otherwise we want to keep on iterating and we can really we can make this a bit shorter and if we are finished looping then we know that we have a prime so this is a simple function you can probably do a lot of optimizations here but this is just a way so let's save this up and switch back to our program let's clear the screen and hopefully we'll find new primes now and append it to our array so 41 turns out to be a prime cool so let's try something else let's do a bigger number we got two times two times a very big prime so let's do a couple let's do a couple of numbers whoops and 3 times 41 equals 123 so we can check the math I'm pretty confident that this works so so this is one of many many questions and it really and what the interviewer wants to see is how you tackle problems under stressful situations because it will be stressful when you're there up there at the whiteboard and you have two, two people trying to guide you through a solution uh, but just take it easy try to 
break it down into bits and pieces and uh, you'll probably solve the problem. So my challenge to you guys is to provide your own solution and hopefully more efficient than mine uh, because it's been quite some time since I tried to address these kind of problems. But it's really fun and uh, hopefully I'll provide you with a new challenge next week. So until next time, have a great day guys. Bye.